It is a tail as old as time. The classic toe touch. You've probably done it in PE class. Maybe you've done it at your gym. Maybe you've done it at the doctor's office. You've probably done it sometime before, but there's a ton of back and forth on What's the actual benefit of it? Does it tell us what we need to know about someone? You see, believe it or not, roughly half the population cannot even touch their toes. But here's the deal. Most people think it's because oh, my hamstrings are too tight or maybe it's shorter than what it needs to be because I sit all day, whatever it may be. But the reality is that might not be the case for you. So we're on a quest today to do just this, to show you how we can get someone who can't touch their toes to actually touch their toes in less than 10 minutes, all without a single stretch. All right, first step, let's actually find someone that can't touch their toes. Sid, can you touch your toes? Perfect. Looks like good peanut butter. Can you actually do it? Yeah. Show it, show it, show it. We gotta see proof, proof. How do they do it though? Hold on a second. Wait, is that, is that legit? Let's go feet together. All right, she's legit. We'll, we'll find someone else. John, can you touch your toes? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think he's gonna do it. Let's find someone else. Uh, Marissa, can you touch your toes? All right, quest continue. Andrew, can you touch your toes? Of course. Let's see it. That's a, that's, that's, oh, I, I missed, I missed the easiest one. Dylan, can you touch your toes? Absolutely. I don't believe it. Let me see. Let's find I'll out here, it. folks. I'll prove it. Let's, let's, hold on, hold on. Let us get centered. Show the, the people what they want to see, Dylan. All right, that's a toe touch. All right, onward. John, watch. Hey, can you touch your toes? I don't know. The real test. Let's find out. Hey, uh, turn, the, turn sideways. Feet together, see what you got. We're in action, folks. All right, I'm here with my man, John. We're gonna work through three different ways you can improve your tight hamstrings without actually stretching. So John's gonna be our example, live, live example of how we can actually do this. So really easy to start, John, just put your feet together. I'm gonna have John just touch his toes. We'll see, we'll see where he's at and we'll see if we can't build improvement right through there. So he's about at where his socks are. He's right about the, the top of those socks. Let's make note of that, just above the ankles. So we're gonna take him through three different things and let's see if we can't create a little bit of change. First thing we're gonna work into is what we call our, our supine 90-90 breathing. So John, I'm gonna have you go on your back, legs are gonna be up on the box through here. So first thing we're gonna address with John, because of the hamstrings attachments to the actual hip bones, is we're gonna really attack his hip positioning. That's our first key piece. And we'll do that through breathing. So I got John on the 12-inch box here. I'm gonna have him put this block between knees. Toes and legs are relaxed, just how he is through here. Now here's a couple things. He's relaxed through the stomach. All I'm gonna have John do is work into what we call a posterior tilt. So without getting into the abs here, he's gonna lightly begin to put some pressure into the ground with his lower back, right? So he's in this like kind of tough hip tuck position. Again, without driving that through the abs. From here, he's gonna lift the hips an inch off the ground. So one inch off, you'll see that slight lift. Perfect, now he's driving that through the heels and he's got a light pressure on this block right through here. You should feel those hamstrings working on John. So we've just put his hip in a little bit better position to be able to access hamstrings, glutes, instead of driving all that through the front side. Because sometimes restrictions in the front can affect actual ability to touch toes in, in the case that we're working through here. All I want, John, is a big breath in through nose and then an exhale. Good, long exhale. And notice how I'm helping guide the rib cage down. He's gonna create a little bit of tension here. His hips stay off the ground the whole way. Big breath in, exhale. Notice he's being careful about shrugging as he breathes in, keep breathing out, keep breathing out. And I feel a little bit of tension building here. That's what I want. Two more, big breath in, exhale. Good, strong exhale. Keep going, John. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Good, yeah, now I feel that tension. Feel that, keep that, right? Big breath in. We're actually gonna go two more good ones here. Strong exhale. His hips continue to remain off the ground. He's still putting a little bit of pressure in here. And you should feel your hamstrings really starting to work here, right? Yep, good, good. Big breath in. 
counterintuitive. You're like, why would I want to get the hamstrings working? We are putting his hip in a better position to actually be able to touch his toes. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Good, relax. So you felt that tension we created here and you felt that little hip position that we wanted. So I'm gonna move this box out of the way. Now that we've worked into repositioning his actual pelvis or hips, we're gonna work on what we call a single leg lowering. So John's got a band here. He's gonna bring legs straight towards the sky. He's still in that little posterior tilt that we worked on and this opposite leg is gonna come up as well to the sky. So go ahead and bring that leg up perfectly, John. Good, he's reaching through that heel, pulling toe down towards the shin. So he's gonna take that same, same inhale, exhale, and he's gonna let this leg lower down towards the ground just above. Keep letting it go, keep letting it go, keeping this leg up towards the sky. Back up, big inhale, and he's gonna continue to try to pull through some of that, not going into pain or anything like that. Good exhale there, John. Good exhale, good exhale. So he's using hands to help support that up. Big breath in, pull up, exhale. So he maintains that posterior tilt we worked on in the breathing and that good strong exhale back up. Let's switch to the other side there, John. So if you don't have a band, there's a couple things that you can do. You can even use like a towel, like you put a towel around foot and be able to pull that up. Or if you really need to, what you can do is actually put this foot in like a doorway that holds it up in that stretch and then this other leg moves in and out through that doorway. So John's gonna continue to pull and you can even grip up a little higher here, John, if that's a little easier for you. Yeah, right through there, whatever best. And sometimes like if I had it, I might even put something under his head so he's not driving all that through his neck. But again, keys are a big inhale through here. Exhale as that leg lowers down and he's continuing to try to, cause we got hip flexion on one side, hip working into hip extension on the other side. We're trying to get those opposing things working. Good rest, go ahead and rest there John, perfect. So now let's go into the third and final piece and then we'll retest this toe touch. So next I have John working through what we call our staggered stance RDL. So you're gonna see here how I have right foot forward, left foot is back. And see how his back toe is pretty much even with that back heel. Second piece from here is John wants to think about shifting the majority of that weight to that back leg. So he's gonna think about that weight shifts over and he's gonna drive right hip in front of the left. See how you did that? Okay, so he's now basically shifted hips just a touch. He's gonna take his right hand and he's gonna push hips back behind him like a true RDL fashion. It's as if he's trying to reach his fingertips towards that back toe. So John, go ahead and show us a rep. So he's pushing hips back behind, push, 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 push. And he's gonna feel that work and you feel that on that left side there, John, perfect. Good, back up. Now he wants to maintain a good posture and the key is really this hip actually pushing back behind you, right? So this, what we would call like posterior shift of the weight, pushing, 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 pushing. The reach just puts his pelvis in a good position to actually access that left hamstring back up. Now we're gonna do three reps here. We'll see if, if our rep range really helps us get him into that. Ideally, you're probably hitting, I would say between six or 10 reps as you're going through this, pushing hips back behind. Notice how toes are straight, back up. Let's flip flop those there, John. So let's go and maybe show him in the other direction. So his left leg is forward. Notice this right toe, like you can see John wants to flare that out, but I like that little internal rotation. Bring that foot forward just a touch. Yeah, money, right? So from here, he's gonna shift left hip forward and then shift weight to the right side. Now the key again is the hip going back. So drive that hip back. Now some people will go into like a true, true like full extension of that back knee. Like keep a slight bend like he's doing there. Driving hip back, back up. John's in a pretty good spot there, right? Push this hip back and I'm giving just a little cueing of push back, push back, push back, push back, push back, push back. Because a lot of times, especially in the toe touch position, that little hip shift can help us gain a little bit better access to the hamstrings and get into there. One more here, John. Push hips back behind you. Push, 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 push. Back up. Good, relax through there. All right, the true test. Let's find out. John face sideways right through there. Just take a big inhale, exhale, and just work down towards toes. Think about hips pushing back behind you. I would say that's a big uh, range improvement. Uh, I'm sure everyone can see that back up. Let's do the same thing, John. Just think about hips pushing back behind you. Good exhale towards the bottom. As far as he can work. Look at that. 
That's a toe touch if I've ever seen a toe touch, right? Did you notice what we didn't do with John? We didn't have him lie on his back and just stretch his hamstrings for a period of time. So it begs the question, why did that work with John? Why was he able to touch his toes after three simple exercises and really not many repetitions going through? The simple thing is this, it's not that your hamstring are in some shortened position or that your hamstrings aren't full length. That's actually not the case at all. Typically the pelvis or the hips where the hamstrings are attached aren't in a position that's allowing you to access the range of motion that you wanted, in this case, John touching his toe. All we did was just help teach him how to reposition the hips, then work through that range of motion, and that gave us a window of opportunity to access what we were looking for. Now, is that going to stick? Meaning if John came tomorrow and we had him touch his toes, would he still be able to? Probably not. This is where the training piece comes in. It's consistency over the long haul. The takeaway is this. There is so much more to improving hamstring flexibility than just stretching. We talked about breathing. We talked about repositioning. Those are some of the key variables in increasing range of motion. This relates to everywhere else in the body as well. Tight hip flexors, well, maybe just stretching your hip flexors isn't gonna solve that problem. Understanding the breathing and positioning will. So on the topic of position, you can learn more about that in this video here.